So real quickly, guys, in the chat, um, go ahead and write down uh, in the chat maybe a recent objection you've had. Is there something that you got stumbled on or is there one that you keep getting? You're like, man, I, I'm having trouble with this one. Um, last week uh, that we did this, I think we talked about uh, how to handle when someone says they have an agent already. And what was the other one? There was one other one that we did. I don't remember exactly, but stuff like that, right? The more uh, feedback you guys can give me of what you're actually dealing with right now, the better. This way, we this is our time to work on them. So I just found out my cousin is in real estate. Rates are too high. I'm going to wait. Waiting for prices to keep going down. I will buy by the end of the year. Okay, let's see. Okay, so once again, guys. Yeah, last week we worked on, I don't think it's a good time to buy because of the market. I'm already working with an agent. And then how, how to handle when someone only wants to text you. Holding off till next year. The war in the economy is still ongoing. I'm sure the market will crash. Don't know if it's a good time to buy. I spoke with you guys before and I didn't like what you had to offer. Uh, possibly moving out of state due to the market in California. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do today, guys. We're gonna do some role play. So this is where one of you guys is gonna be the agent and one of you guys is gonna be the client. And we're gonna role play through some of these objections right here and then we're gonna um give some feedback and critique you guys and give you some pointers on how we can make it better or you know and also give you uh I'll let you know what you're doing well and let you maybe know what stuff you can work on now one of the things that i do want to remind you guys of and i'm going to keep reminding you guys of this is how we respond to objections by using the repeat and approve format right? Someone says, hey, I think I'm going to hold off rather than just saying, well, this is why you shouldn't hold off. And then it's like taking the time to acknowledge what they just said. Oh, okay. So you're going to hold off. I completely understand. I totally understand where you're coming from. So making sure we're doing that repeat and approve before we go into tackling that objection. So I want to make sure you guys are using that and because it's going to take practice. It's going to take practice to kind of rechange how you speak to people. So who wants to volunteer? I need two volunteers. Someone's going to be the agent and someone's going to be the client. Brenda. Be the agent. Okay, we got Brenda. Who else? I'll volunteer. Jomo? <laughs> okay, Jomo. Sure. Jomo, you're going to be the agent? Let me take a shot at it. Okay, and then Brenda, you're gonna be the client. And Brenda, I want you to use the objection that you wrote in the uh, chat. You wrote, I don't know if it's a good time to buy. Uh, you also wrote already working with the real estate agent. So. Um, oh yeah, so I had a call yesterday and she gave me both of those objections on the same call, so. <laughs> so. so Right off the bat, I mean, those are like two contradictory objections, right? Like, I don't know if it's a good time to buy, but I'm already working with an agent. So are you buying or you're not buying, right? Well, I, I called her from the pond too. So it's I think that's why she was like, she had already spoken with another real estate agent. Got it. Okay. So just pick one of those for this example, because okay. majority of the time, you're not going to get two objections like that. Yeah. So just pick one of them. And then you're going to role play it with Jomo. Okay. So Jomo, you're calling Brenda. Let me, let me set the stage. Jomo, you're calling Brenda and um, okay, she's go. an old lead from the pond. And All right, my timer is up. going off really quick. Can I turn it off? Hold on a second. Huh? So Jomo, the, here's the scenario is you're calling Brenda from the pond. Um, she was a Zillow lead that inquired six months ago, you're just calling the check-in. And what we're looking for is your introduction. We're looking for, she's gonna give you an objection and we're gonna look for how you handle that objection. So 
Ring, ring, ring. Brenda, say hello. Jomo, hello. you're the agent. Hi, Brenda. Yes, this is Brenda. Hey, Brenda, this is Jomo with PRG Real Estate. Um, I was just checking in with you to see if you still had plans to buy a home. Uh, saw that you looked on Zillow uh, around six months ago. How's everything going? Uh, yeah, I, um, I looked six months ago, but then now I'm not really looking anymore. Okay, guy, you're not really looking anymore. Um, what has changed though? Um, well, I was working with a real estate agent six months ago, and um, I haven't really talked to that agent. Okay, got it. So you guys are not in touch. Um, is there a specific reason? Uh, nope. Got it. No, no, no problem. But definitely what I hear you saying is that, um, is that depending on that agent? Because there's still not an opportunity for you to buy. Um, when last have you gotten a market update from you just browsing on Zillow either or any other websites? Uh, I've just been talking with family and friends, but I don't really think it's a good time to buy right now. Okay, got it. Well, to be honest, it's not a good time to buy anything, right? But even though that's, that's basically what the market is looking like, there's a lot of opportunities out there. And um, I'd really like to get you connected with one of my senior agents for you get a market update. So when's the best time and date for you? Uh, I don't really know if I want to meet your other agent. Okay, got it. Uh, what do you think is holding you back, though? Because I don't think it's a good time to buy. I totally understand. I totally understand. But hey, tell you what, um, you're not going to be committed in anything. And I definitely hear what you're saying. We don't want to, um, uh, man, <laughs> I love chat here in your day. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing really good. I am? Yeah. Keep going. Okay, We're on a live call. We're on a live call. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, yeah. Um, I definitely understand that it's not a good time. And I totally hear you. But hey, we don't want to get you committed in anything. We definitely see what you were looking for. You're looking for a single family home in uh, San Mateo. And there's a lot of opportunities out there because persons are still buying. And we've, uh -huh. we've been helping a lot of persons, um, over 100 persons buy purchase homes because we're Zillow's preferred broker. So um, it's not going to take any time out of you, 10 to 15 minutes just to get a market update. So does this weekend work for you? Uh, yeah, if it's a 10 minute call, I can do that. Sure. When is the best time to get a hold of you on Saturday? Uh, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Got it. And I have your phone number here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's still the best number, right? Yep. That one's good. Your email okay, address. Let's stop right there. Stop right there. <laughs> stop right there. All right. First of all, let's just give it up for Brenda and Jomo for participating. Good job on that. Let's give them some thumbs up. Some thumbs up. Good job, good job. Um, feedback, feedback. Uh, Jason, Please, what sort guys, of feedback, feedback can you give Jomo? Well, I, I think definitely, I mean, Jomo, Jomo started off good with, with his repeat and just, you know, repeating back and understanding what, what she said. I think, um, I don't know, Jomo, did you get a little nervous because you're on this call on, on Zoom? Because um, then I said you I'm, got a little, you got yeah, a little I'm nervous. Always yeah, I, I'm, I, I always get nervous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it I, comes I mean, out I, when I talk. Yeah, I, I definitely think, um, yeah, I mean, I, I can see that Jomo got nervous because I've role played with Jomo before and, and he, you know, he, he kind of had a better flow, right? So I, I think, I mean, I don't know, Enrique, I think we got to give him one more shot. We got to give him one more shot on uh, going to go and give him some, some pointers, but let's give him another shot. I think, I think the butterflies are gone now. Well, okay. All right. Well, let's let's do this. Before we do that, I, I want to break down his his what he said. Right. So I want to break it down into sections. Number one is let's talk about the intro. His intro was like, hey, this is Jomo. Um, I forgot exactly how he said it, but he said, hey, uh, you were searching on our, our site a few months back and I'm just following up to see if you ever bought a home. Right. Um, I think his intro came off really smooth. It was really good. I, I feel like he started off really strong. It was like not too pushy. It was super casual. I like how he referred to Brenda just by first name, right? He's all, hey, Brenda. And she's like, yeah, hey, this is Jomo, PRG Real Estate. Um, just following up to see if you ever bought a home. You were on our website, you know, six months ago. That's perfect. That's textbook intro, right? Like just keeping it light and casual and not sounding like 
a robot or not sounding like a salesperson. It's just like, hey, I'm just following up to see if you guys ever made a move. All right. So I want to give you, you know, five stars on your intro. Um, great, great job on that. And everyone take notes of that, right? Is, is your intro is very important because those first few seconds, like the client is going to decide whether they want to keep talking to you or not within the first five seconds, right? So if your intro sounds like too robotic or um, I get a lot of spam calls. Have any of you got spam calls and like you totally know it's a salesperson calling you? You know, because number one is like they butcher your name. Like I get a lot of them where they're like, Hello, Mr. Medallion, um, this, you know, like this is so-and-so with this company. Like, it's like they're reading a script, right? So that's what you don't want to do. You want to make it cool, calm, collect, bring that energy, bring that good vibe, just like Jomo did. So that's number one. Um, then he started getting into handling some objections, right? And I think that's kind of where we fumbled a little bit is... What I would like Jomo, what I would like to see from you, Jomo, is you ask a little bit more questions about why she doesn't think it's a good time to buy. Because she told you it's not, she doesn't think it's a good time to buy. And then you said, well, there's a lot of opportunities right now, but it's important, Jomo, that you understand why she doesn't think it's a good time to buy so that you can kind of go down that narrative with her. And, and Enrique, Enrique, she, she, did, she did two yeah. things. She threw... One, she stopped connecting with her agent, and then it's not a good time to buy. So she kind of did like a, a yeah. double, right, objection, right? So I think that that's important to understand, too. Yeah, so ask more questions, right? Instead of, you know, like we talked about on our last training, instead of like trying to already give the, the solution, well, there's a lot of opportunity right now. A lot of people are still buying. You have to diagnose her a little bit more. So I really want everyone to take notes of that is you have to ask more questions and try to understand why she's thinking that it's not a good time to buy and maybe why she stopped connecting with her agent. Like I would ask a little bit more questions about that. So I would say, Hey, Brenda. So, you know, I totally understand. You don't think it's a good time to buy. I totally understand. Let me ask you, what is it about buying right now that concerns you or what, why don't you think it's a good time to buy? You know, I'm, I'm curious. Because then Brenda will, Brenda will tell me, well, I don't know if I can afford a home, right? Or I don't, the interest rates are too high and I don't know if it's within my reach or I don't know, I think the market's going to go down, right? Then she's going to tell you a little bit more. So remember, I don't think it's a good time to buy it can mean like a hundred different things, right? A hundred different answers there. So you got to find out why she doesn't think it's a good time to buy. And then you can say, you can offer something or offer a suggestion or a solution to that. So let's role play that right there, right? This is our chance to go deep in detail with this. So Brenda, I want uh, Brenda and Jomo again. I want Brenda, I want you to tell him again, you don't think it's a good time to buy. Okay. Uh, ring, ring. Or wait, no, that's the other way. Uh, Jomo, go ahead. No, just, let's just start off with the objection. Just start off with the objection. We're, he already did his intro. We're now oh, at the objections. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, when I was speaking with my real estate agent six right. months ago, I didn't think that it was a good time to buy. And now I'm kind of just on that same slope. Okay. Got it. So you spoke to him six months ago and you determined that then, but let's talk about it though. What, why do you, why did you think that it wasn't a good time to buy? And why do you still feel that way right now? Uh, because I saw um, the prices of homes rising. Oh, okay. All righty. Got it. So pretty much, you know, you're hearing on the news that everything is going up. All righty. Got it. Um, and tell you what, what you're seeing is, 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 I can't deny it, but I've spoke to a lot of persons in your position and we have had the opportunity to sit down with them, break stuff down. That's historical data. Um, with the interest rates and what it may project it to be. And I'm saying this to say that you're not seeing everything. So with a 10 to 50 minute call, you will decide that, hey, should I hold off or should I do something in the next 90 days or, or three to six months? So that's pretty much what we want to accomplish. You're not being tied into anything, all right? 
So um, does this okay, weekend work right for you? There. Let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. Um, okay, so here's what I want to get at. Um, Jomo, good job on saying on you did exactly what you should have did. Why, you know, why didn't you want to buy, right? I would still ask more questions about that. She told you the prices went up. Okay. When someone tells you the prices went up, what are they really trying to tell you? That is, um, it may have been out of your budget that it's too expensive for yeah. you to buy right now. Yeah. She, she may not be able to afford it, right? Maybe it's out okay. of her price range. Maybe it's out of her budget, right? So I would stick with that. Okay. Right. I would say, Hey, Hey, I totally understand. It sounds like you're concerned with the prices going up. Uh, are you not sure if you can afford a home right okay. now? One of your concerns, Brenda. Okay. Uh, you know, have you had a chance? Or like, I think another rebuttal would be like, well, I can connect you with um, our preferred lender and they can show you um, loan programs that you might be qualified for. Uh, let me get you in touch with them. Does this time and day work for you? Yeah, so so that's definitely a good suggestion, but I, I want us to get to the root of why someone says the prices are too high, right? Let's okay. go a little deeper with this, right? When someone says the prices are too high, that means either they don't know if they can afford it um, yeah. because at the end of the day, the price is going to equal a monthly payment, right? There's the price, there's the interest rate, there's a monthly payment, and it's all about affordability. So you want to like tackle that a little bit more, right? You want to go peel that onion back a little bit more. You want to say, hey, I totally understand and you're concerned with the prices going up. And yeah, you know, we live in an expensive area. Um, have you ever had the opportunity, Brenda, to sit with a loan officer and kind of go through the different loan programs and different pricing options and see what the what your payments would be what your down payment needs to be and like understand where you stand uh where you sit financially have you ever had that opportunity brenda uh no i haven't but i would like to <laughs> okay okay so that so that's very important right because you're concerned with the prices being too high a lot of people are concerned but really it's a matter of you just getting a little bit more education and that's where we can help you is we can help get you on a line with one of our preferred lenders and there's no obligation to this. And let us just show you, walk you through like, okay, at this price, this is what the payment is at this price. This is what the rate is. And we can make, basically after that 10 or 15 minute call, you're going to know if it's really, if the prices are really too high or not, or if you can afford to make a move right now. Um, would that be helpful to you, Brenda? Yes, that would be perfect. Okay, great. So, you know, when's the best time to me? I got this time or this time and now I'm booking the appointment, right? So you see guys, we got to go a little bit deeper. When someone tells you an objection, you got to figure out what the meaning behind that objection is. The prices are too high. That means they don't know if they can afford it, or maybe they haven't sat with a loan officer you know, maybe they don't know what, where they stand. Maybe they don't know how much down payment they need. Maybe they don't know what the monthly payments are. That's what that means, right? So you got to really get to the root of the problem. And that's where you say, the prices are too high. I totally understand you. But what I'm hearing you say is maybe you're not sure what you can afford right now because, you know, have you had a chance to sit down with the loan officer and go through all that? That's what, that's what I'm, this is what you're saying. But I think what I'm hearing you say is this. You guys see the difference with that? Where'd Joe Mo go? Joe Mo leave? Um, let's flip the cards around. Brenda, so Brenda, you're going to role play this with me, right? We're going to stick with the same objection. The purpose of this, of these trainings, guys, is not to like cover 10 objections. It's to go deep with one and really peel it apart so that you guys can get a, a full understanding of how to break something down and it's going to make you better with every single objection you, you encounter. Yeah. I, so I think Brenda, that's a good point. it's a good point to explain that Enrique, that this, this technique is universal, right? Peeling that onion back, asking these questions. It doesn't matter what objection it is. You're going to continue to do this process. Right. Yeah. So can I be the agent? Uh, You're now the agent okay. because now you heard 
you just heard how you're supposed to answer that, right? So now I'm going to give you that objection. And then I want you to use what I just taught you to walk me through that, right? Okay. okay. So, so Brenda, yeah, I was talking to an agent, you know, a few months back, but I kind of put things on hold because I just don't know if it's a good time to buy. And I, I think prices are a little high. Uh, yeah, Enrique, I totally understand that. But would you be interested in getting a market update on current market trends? It'll be a 10 minute call. Um, and I'll, I'll be talking to you about um, if it is possible for you, if it is an opportunity for you to buy in this current market. Okay, okay. let's stop right there. Remember, <laughs> you got to go deeper with with what I just told you, I just told you the prices are too high. Uh -huh. And I don't, I don't know if it's a good time to buy. So what do I really mean when I say the prices are too high? Um, that you need a better understanding of um, your financial situation and if yep. the affordability is there. Okay. So then I want you to ask me that question. Have you had an opportunity to really understand your financial uh -huh. situation and see if you can afford it? Right. I want you to ask me that question because you know what I mean by me telling you prices are too high. Uh -huh. Now I want you to ask me, hey, Enrique, well, have you had a chance to do this? OK, so let's role play that all over. So, yeah, Brenda, I just think the prices are too high and I just don't know if it's a good time for me to buy. Uh, yeah, well, Enrique, have you had the opportunity to sit with a loan officer to understand um, the market and what your monthly payments would look like and if you can afford um, the homes at the price you're looking at? Um, no, not really. I just kind of went online and like did some of those calculators. Um, but no, I haven't really sat down with someone and, and kind of went into detail. Okay. Well, I can definitely connect you with, a, with our in-house loan officer, um, to go over your financial situation and sort, sort the calculations out. <laughs> Oh. Mm -hmm. um, would you be interested in that? Okay, Brent, no, I'm going to stop you, right? So I, I want you to really like, Are you, are you, yeah, okay. Sorry, I'm getting. <laughs> but Brenda, if, if, if I don't believe you, if I don't believe that you believe what you're saying, then I'm not going to believe, right? Like, so I need you to say it with a little more authority, with a little more conviction, with a little more energy. You know, like, here's what I would say. Well, hey, Brenda, you know, have you had a chance to actually meet with the, uh, a mortgage professional and like go through all the loan programs and all your qualifications and see what your payments would be? And I'm going to say, no, I haven't. Well, Brenda, that's exactly why we should meet. That's exactly why we should meet for maybe a 10 or 15 minute call. And the great thing is that I have some awesome loan officers I work with that will be able to like in 10 minutes, they're gonna get, educate you so much and they're gonna show you exactly where you stand. Uh, don't you think that would be helpful? Okay, so now Brenda, you see the way that I said it? Like yeah. with a little more, with <clears throat> a little more certainty, with a little more conviction, like with a little more like, you know, power yeah. to it. That's how I want, that's how I want you to say. Okay, so Brenda, um, yeah, I just, the prices are too high and you know, the. The prices just seem really high. I just don't know if it's a good time to buy for me. Yeah, I totally understand, Enrique. But have you had the opportunity to sit with a loan officer and understand your financial situation, what your monthly payments would look like, what you would qualify for? Um, no, not really. It's just, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, I haven't really. No, I just kind of went online and you know, a lot of my friends are saying like, it's just too expensive to buy. So yeah, not really. Okay, well, that's exactly why you should meet with our loan officers so that you can sort out your finances and get a better understanding of the market and your financial situation. Is that a little better? Yeah, that, perfect, perfect. Let me add yeah, one that, in. That makes let, me, let, me, let me jump in there. The yeah. other way, the other way you can answer that, that's great, Brenda. That's a great way of answering it. The other way is like, great, Enrique. You know, so the great thing about our company, Enrique, is that we have a mortgage or we have a loan officer that sits in this office. So the great thing is I can go in and set up a time for us to meet and they can go over all your financial options, right? So there's different phrases, yeah. different ways you can adjust it, but you did a great job for doing that. Yeah. 
but Brenda, do you see the difference? And this is for all you guys to take notes. Do you see the difference in saying, would you be interested in meeting with my loan officer? Versus that's exactly why we need to meet, Brenda. You know, like when you meet with our loan officer, I have someone that sits in house. That's the great thing about our company. They're going to be able, like in 10 minutes, they'll be able to walk you through your finances. And then at the end of those, that call, you're going to know exactly where you stand. And you're going to know if it, it makes sense for you to buy or not. That's exactly why we need to meet. Um, that's, I got to believe that's something you, you'd be interested in, right? So you see the difference between like, hey, would you be interested versus that's exactly why we need to meet. One of them is like, a little I'm more sure. um, authority and conviction. Exactly. Authority and conviction. Remember, your energy, your authority, your conviction, your ability to lead people down the path is going to make the difference between you booking appointments and closing more sales. If you're like shy and timid and you're just like, hey, would you be interested? People are going to walk all over that. Like you need to say it with confidence and Brenda, that's going to come with time. But the good thing is right now is you're getting the training right now so that, you know, this is how I should be talking to people. Right. Mm -hmm. And Brenda, and this may go for other people. Some people, you may be like a little more passive and a little more timid, like naturally, but when you're on a sales call and you're in act and the camera's on, it's lights, camera action. You need to turn that shit on. Right. You need to turn on the authority figure. You need to be the boss. You need to be more the boss woman. You need to be the more leader. confident. <laughs> more confident because you're a, the difference between a great salesperson. It's not what they say. It's how they say it. You and I could say the same exact mm -hmm. word for word, but I say it with more authority and with more confidence and with more conviction. And it it makes a thousand percent more impact than someone who is just kind of like saying the same line, but not really sure and not really, not really confident. Yeah. Like tonality. That's the big difference. Tonality, tonality. What you got, Rob? <laughs> I 100% I, I agree. I, I just want to jump in really quick and kind of say things, uh, say something. Um, like how many of us have pen and paper right now? I mean, we all, we all have pen and paper right now in front of us? Okay. Here's the, re here's the reason why I'm bringing this up. It sounds like Enrique is teaching Ryu and I came in a little bit later. Is that correct, Diego? Are you teaching the Ryu method? Uh, kind of, a little bit, yeah. Okay, okay. The reason why I'm bringing this up, guys, because even a veteran like myself who's been doing this for 15, 16, 17 years still has it up in, on this computer. And there's a couple of things is what, when it comes to sales marketing over the phone, it's, you have to not memorize the words. You have to memorize the skill, Okay. And the skill for Ryu, each little, it's an acronym that means something for everything. I use ARPing. That's what I use. Uh, a means agreeable acknowledgement. R means removing resistance. P means pivoting in, uh, uh, to a different question. It's all the same thing, right? But once, you, once you're able to figure out the skill, the words at that point, you can, you can combat any single rebuttal that's out there, right? So practice is going to be when it, the, the practice where you're going to perfect the skill is going to be on your tonality. Then it's at that point, it's going to come out to the words that you end up coming, the, the, the coming out, the confidence is going to come out. All that stuff is going to be practicing if you just practice the skill. So the reason why I'm saying is, do we have a pen and paper in front of us is because the way that what I'm seeing so far right now is I don't see the order that it's being spit out correctly. Right. And I think if we just have something in front of us where we can look down and say, Hey, listen, right now it's an agreeable acknowledgement that I've got to go. And then I have to remove the resistance and then I have to pivot the difference. That's the actual skill, right guys? So, so let's see if we can maybe kind of figure out what that, what that skill track line is. And then at that point, the, the, the words become easy because Brenda, you kind of got it right. But it seems like it's a little bit kind of choppy all over the place, right? If we were to put what you said in the same order, it'd come out totally different, right? So it's not so much the words, it's maybe so much the, 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 the how you said it. That comes out, yeah, right. How you said it, and we went over for the Ryu right now. What we're doing is we're just we're we've taught the Ryu, but now we're diving deep into actual examples and, and role playing it out. Okay, um, because it's one it's one thing to like read, hey, this is how you do it, but if you don't practice it enough, like in these settings, 
you're not going to know if I'm, if you're doing it right, you know? So that's really where the practice comes in. So what Rob is saying is make sure you understand the process and then make sure you practice that shit like this, like we're doing now so that you know, okay, this is how I'm supposed to do it. Now, the other um, thing I want to hold on. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The other thing I want to teach is the power of hypotheticals. Okay. It means a lot. A lot of us tell people what to, how to, we tell people a lot of things, right? But I want you guys to change that mindset and start saying, you know, start giving them a little story. Like, let's role play really quick. Okay. Give me, give me, give me a rebuttal. You mind? Is that cool? Well, let's play that one, right? That's, what, that's the common one. Well, hey, hey, Rob, I just don't know if, if it's a good time to buy. The prices are high right now. And I just don't know if it's a good time for me to buy. Hey, Enrique, I totally understand. And you know what? What's going on in the market? I, I would probably feel the same way. Let me ask you this. If for some crazy reason, we were able to find the perfect house at the perfect price, would that be something that would, uh, that, that would entice you to take the next step? Um, yeah, possibly, but I, I would just need to know, you know, all the details and, you know, what my payments would be and all, all that. Cause I just don't, you know, I don't know if I can afford it. Definitely. Definitely. So details of what you're looking for. So why don't I go ahead and do this? Why don't we go ahead and schedule a meeting for tomorrow between one or either at four o'clock, I'll put you in contact with one of my top, uh, lending, uh, agents, and they can go ahead and explain to you any questions that you have in regards to the finance. Does that work for you? Yeah, yeah, that, that would be helpful. So the difference between a professional, I think, guys, and an amateur when it comes to these, the, the phones is that we're both going to get to the finish line at the same uh, – we're both going to get to the finish line. It's just who's going to get to the finish line sooner, right? Now, the reason why that matters is because the sooner that you can get to the finish line, it's, you can jump onto the next phone call, right? Now, the great thing about this, about sales, guys, this is a numbers game, right? That client might not be the right client for me right? But it allows me another opportunity to jump onto the next one. Now, we have to remember that the reason why we having uh, the, the, the whole purpose of having a telemarketing call is not to get business. It's not it, guys. It's to get, receive an opportunity in the form of an appointment. At the appointment is where I'm going to now figure out if they're going to be a client of mine or if they're not going to be a client of mine, right? So we have to take it to that next step. You're, we, how do you need an elephant? One bite at a time, right? The first step is to get them in front of you face to face. 80% of sales is, happens to be with sale line, sales language. It happens to be how I look, how I dress, how I speak. But if I can't perform that 80% because I'm not in front of them, I don't have that opportunity. I'm in the, I'm in, uh, I'm fighting a losing battle right off the bat. So at this point of the game, I'm not even trying to convince you to buy or sell. All I'm asking for is an opportunity. And once I get that opportunity, then at that point, I can go ahead and figure out if it's something that I want to do or not. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you're selling the appointment guys. Like, like he said, you're selling the appointment on that scenario for them to meet with the loan officer. Right. You're not saying, Hey, are you going to buy or sell with me? You're saying, Hey, would it be helpful? If we met with our loan officer and they went over all the details with you. This way you can see if it makes sense for you to make a move. That's what the goal is of that. Right. Your goal is to book the appointment. And then at the appointment, then you're going to go through the whole script and see if they're, they want to sell or buy with you, right? So it's the, that's a two-step process. Sometimes on the phones, what we're doing is we're saying, hey, well, if I could do this, would you, want to, would you want to work with me? It's like, no, like you're trying to jump to the next step. The first step is like, hey, let's set a time to meet. And in our appointment, this is what we're going to go over. And then we'll determine if it makes sense for us to work together. You guys see the difference between that, between selling the appointment and then at the appointment, you're going to sell why they should work with you, right? You're trying to create that opportunity. Um, okay, let's role play this again, guys. we got a couple more minutes. Um, let's get a different uh, someone else to role play this. Who's someone that hasn't gone before? I need two people. I need someone to be the agent and someone to be the client maybe the yep. client Ooh, okay Tara. okay you're gonna be the client tara yeah <laughs> let me ask you this oh, no. do you need more training being the client or more training being the agent um agent cool okay I'll be the client. Tara, 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 did the, 
Tara did a little trick, guys. Yes, yeah, she did. <laughs> she's she been the client, so she can't be the agent. And Tara, th th we know the trick. Oh. We, we used okay. to sit in your chair. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll be the client. So, be the Tara, client. you're going to be the agent. No, no, no. Okay. You're going to be the agent. I'll be the client. Okay. You're going to be the client. Tara, you're going to be the agent. So, Jay, it's the same exact script, same spiel. We're using, we're doing the same rebuttal. That's the only one we're working on today. Prices are too high. I don't know if it's a good time for me to buy. Got it. So ring, ring, ring. Tara, you're following up on an old lead. It's, it's been in our system for several months. You're calling to check in, see if they made a move. And then Jason's going to give you the objection. So go ahead and start just like a fresh call. Ring, ring, ring. Say hello, Jason. Hello? Uh, hello, is this Jason? Yeah, this is Jason. Who's this? Hi, Jason. This is Tara. I'm the preferred lender with Zillow. Um, I saw that you inquired a while back and I just wanted to. Oh, I saw that you in. Wait, this is on a property or is Zillow lending? Um, they just inquired online about buying a house. That's it. Oh, OK. Um, I saw that you inquired a while back on a property. I just wanted to check in with you and see how your home search is going. Uh, you know, we're going to put it on hold right now, but, th but thank you for your call, Tara. Okay. Um, just out of curiosity, uh, why did you decide to put your search on hold? Uh, you know what? Prices, prices have gone up too much. So, you know, my wife and I, we decided to hold off for now. Okay. Um, I hear you. Uh, prices did go. Uh, no, no, I hear, I hear what you're saying. Um, have you... Have you had the opportunity to sit down and talk to a lender to see what you might qualify for? Uh, we, we did about six months ago. Okay. And, uh, okay, so you did about six months ago. Um, we do have a lot of different programs that um, can definitely help you po uh, potentially qualify for more. Um, I think it would be a great idea if we, um, had a quick Zoom conversation and really looked at your looked at some numbers and see what you could qualify with. No, qualify for like with in today's rates. Okay, let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. Um, first of all, good job on on the attempt. Let's give it up for good job on trying on Thanks. making the attempt. Let me give you let me give you a big pointer right now. Is if someone Talk to somebody six months ago. Has the market changed in six months, the last six months? Yeah. Have the interest rates changed in the last six months? Have the loan programs changed in the last six months? We're in a different climate now, right? Yeah. So don't assume, don't assume that just because they talked to someone six months ago that it's all the same, right? And that's that's an opportunity for you to say, hey, that's exactly why we should meet, because in the last six months, a lot of things have changed. Mm -hmm. um, the market has changed, prices have changed, um, the competition has changed. There's a lot of different things happening now that's more in favor for buyers than there was six months ago, right? Because mm -hmm. Jason, Jason may not know that. He may not know. He, he thinks, when I inquired six months ago, prices were too high. I talked to someone. That's it. That's final. We're six months later, right? So I would really use that to my advantage. Hey, Jason, you know, six months, a lot has changed. Have you had, have you talked to anybody recently, like in the past, you know, couple of weeks to see what has changed in the market and how it may benefit you, right? Mm -hmm. So let's try that again. We're going to try that all over again. And I want you to use that angle. Um, ring, ring, ring. Hello. Say hello, Jason. Give me one second. Give me one second. Hold on. Hello. Hi, Jason. Yeah, this is Jason. Hi, Jason. This is Tara. I'm the preferred lender with Zillow. Um, I'm calling because I saw that you inquired on a property a while back. I just wanted to check in and see how your home search is going. Uh, you know, we we, uh, we put it on hold. But thank you. Thank you for your call, Tara. Okay. Um, can I ask, why did you decide to put it on hold? Uh, we, You know what? We saw that the, the prices have gone up. So we're, we're just going to wait, wait for prices to come back down. Okay, I hear you. Um, you did look six months ago and a lot has changed in the market. Have you have you talked to anyone recently about what you could qualify for today? 
Um, no, I haven't. I think it would be a great idea for us to jump on a quick call, uh, run some numbers. There are a lot of different programs that can help you potentially qualify for more. Uh, what's your schedule looking like this week? Um, we can probably do in the evening. Evening with tomorrow at um, seven work? Yes. Okay, stop right there. Stop right there. Boom. You got the appointment, right? You got the appointment just by not really like, okay, six months ago, like not a big deal. Have you looked at the market recently? Have you talked to someone recently? And then what I would do, Tara, is I would go a little deeper, right? Like, hey, have you talked to someone recently? So Jay, let's role play this. Um, no. Jason, you know, that was six months ago when you looked. Have you have you actually talked to someone recently? Like, and see what you qualify for? Like in the last couple of weeks? No, I haven't. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Um, there's been a lot of changes in the last six months. And actually what we're seeing today is that it's been a lot more favor for the buyers right now, like price quickly, uh, loan programs have changed dramatically. Um, were you aware of that? No, I wasn't. Oh, okay. That's exactly, you know, why I think it'd be important for you to talk to someone. Um, what I'd like to do is set up a time for us to, to just have a quick phone call. And I want to update you on the market and I want to show you where the opportunities are right now. Cause six months ago, when you looked, you're right, the prices were up and it was, it was a lot tougher back then. It's actually a lot different now. So um, is mornings or afternoons work for you? Yeah, perfect. Okay. The reason why I say that is because in this situation, like Jason just said, okay, set the appointment, right? You're not, they're not all going to be that easy. So I want you to be able to go a little bit deeper and talk about, how prices have changed, how it's more in favor for a buyer right now, how there's less competition. Like you, you need to be able to know these things so that you can use that as ammunition when you're talking to people. Cause they're not all going to say, okay, let's meet. Right. So mm -hmm. you, you always want to say, this is why we're going to meet. Cause we're going to show you a, B and C, or were you aware of a, B and C, right? That's how you're going to go deeper with that. Any questions on that? Um, Enrique, so what you yes. said about um, it, it being in favor for the buyers, that's, um, that's, actual, that's actual information right now, right? Yeah. Okay, got it. It's act and that's why it's important for, for you guys to know the market, right? So right now, there's a lot more inventory. So let's compare six months ago or even three months ago to now. Three Three months ago, there was a lot less homes for sale, which means every home had more competition. There was more offers on every home, which means prices were going up higher and they were going way above the asking price. Now we have a lot more inventory. We have a lot more homes available, um, which means homes are not getting as many offers. There are some buyers who put things on hold. So you're able to now go in and you have a lot better shot of getting the home at a way better price, or maybe even offering a little bit less, or maybe even negotiating a better price in terms. Um, right now, you have a lot more opportunity as a buyer than you did six months ago. It's dramatically different. So we need to let people know that, hey, yes, the market was crazy. It's still competitive, but today it's a lot more in favor because there's more inventory, there's less competition, the loan programs have changed. This is why we need to meet and at least update you on what's happening in the market. So those are Good actual cool facts. Now, on the other flip side, for a seller, it's the same conversation. Hey, the market has changed from six months ago till now. It's a different market, which means there's a different strategy. Homes are still selling but there's a different level of effort you now have to put into the homes, right? It requires a more strategic plan with your pricing. It requires more preparation on your home. Homes are still selling, but you're not able to just throw it on the market and it sells tomorrow. This is why we, this is exactly why we need to meet so we can go over what's working today and see if it makes sense for you to make a move, right? I'm not asking you to buy or sell me. I'm saying this is why we need to meet so we can go over this information and see if it makes sense. So here's a powerful thing you can say to clients. Let's see if it makes sense. I want everyone to repeat that. Let's see if it makes sense. Why is that powerful? Who wants to, 
Who can tell me why that's powerful? Because it, there's no commitment. There's no commitment. You're not committing. You're not committing. Exactly. Right. When you say, hey, let's at least. Uh, plus you can let oh, I want to see. What was that? Um, when you say let's meet and go over all the information and let's at least get you up to date and let's see if it makes sense. What that's a win-win for the client because they get the information, they get to go over it, they get to get an update and there's no commitment. You're not saying, Hey, I want you to buy with me right now. I want you to sell with me. You're saying, Hey, let's at least meet and see if it makes sense. And what happens when there's no commitment, the guard drops from the client, right? It drops. And then they're more likely to say, okay, well, let's at least meet. Let's at least see if it makes sense. It's no obligation. And I get to learn all this information and I get to see where I stand. All right. Yeah. I'll meet with you. So I want you to use that in your, in your language, right? When you're trying to book an appointment, make it easy for the client to meet with you, right? Because if you put too much commitment around it and it's just an appointment and we don't even know if it makes sense before, you're going to push people away. They're going to be scared to meet with you. So who wants to role play that real quick? Let's role play that. We're going to use the same exact script, right? This is exactly why we need to meet. This is exactly why you need to meet with my loan officer. We're going to go over A, B, and C, and we're going to see, you know, let's see if it makes sense for you to buy right now. Um, who wants to try that? Dewey, you want to try that? I'll see you. Connie? Yeah, I can do it. Okay, Dewey, let's role play that. So... I want you to tell me uh, that's exactly why we need to meet. You know, that we're using the same scenario, right? The same scenario that we've been practicing. I, the prices are too high, but I haven't really looked at my finances. That's exactly why we need to meet. Let's see if it makes sense. I want you to just role play that. Okay. Yeah, Dewey. Dewey so, um, so Dewey, I, you know, thanks for calling. You know, we decided to put things on hold. Just the prices are too high. And I just don't know if it's a good time for me to buy. Sounds good. I totally understand. Um, however, right now, uh, you have no obligation to, uh, uh, if you were to make an appointment with us for us to update on all their houses price. Uh, for, for what we're seeing right now, uh, we have a lot of inventory and then there's a possible chance we can find the right house with the right term that fit right in your budget. So if, you, if we were able to do that, would you have 30 minutes to an hour of your time where we can sit down with you and, and look over the houses that you are interested in? And then we can help you uh, understand more on the today market. Okay, so you went a little off script, right? What I want okay. you to do is mm -hmm. I want you to use the same exact lines. Like, hey, let's, Let's set up a quick call for you to meet with our lender. We're going to go over your finances and we're going to see if it makes sense. Okay. I want to use that phrase. Cool. Um, so yeah. So do we, yeah, I, I don't know if the prices are too high and yeah, I don't know if it makes sense for me to buy right now. Oh, I totally understand. Uh, however, we can help you understand more on the finance. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm a little bit lost. <laughs> Um, I totally understand. So you, oh, sorry. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it sounded trying, good in my head, but when, get... I, yeah, when I trying to say it out, it's just like all jumped. Uh, it was a uh, like, it sounds like complicated. Guys, yeah, guys, again, I, I know we're on the spot, <laughs> but you, what I want, I want to, I want to kind of, let, let me kind of pull back from this script real quick. What I want you guys to really just get comfortable with is that there are people on this call, me, Enrique, and Robert, that have been doing this for 20 years, okay? Mm -hmm. We were not naturally good at this when we first got on a call like this, okay? We had to, had to, we had to practice this a thousand times for us to get good at it. So I want you guys first to understand this is a safe place. So I, I really applaud you guys for putting yourselves out there. And just make sure you understand that practice makes perfect. So you guys are going to have to practice this. You are going to have to take notes. 
Okay. This is key to your business, guys. <laughs> this is huge because I don't give, I don't care if I give you guys the best leads. You guys are basically pounding your head against the wall if you do not how to make this structure and this these type of calls. Okay. So I really want us to understand that, you know, one great job. You guys are all new at this. A lot of us are. Mm -hmm. And it took Enrique, Jason, and, and Robert a long time to get at this level. But I want us to really take this serious and practice this because again, when I put you on these ponds, if, if you can dial, but if you don't know what to say, you're not going to get anything. Right. Mm -hmm. So again, just relax, Dewey. We got you. Be patient, guys. This is a place where you guys can feel safe and you are going to fail. We are going to fail here, which is totally fine, because after you fail, you're going to have some success. All right. I just had to say that out there, Enrique. Uh, no, one more thing. One more thing, guys. One more thing. Guys, this is the secret right here. This is the secret. If you memorize all of the rebuttals and there's there's only a handful of rebuttals, guys. There's only a handful of them. If you memorize all of them, right, you will make a shit ton of money in sales, right? That's it. It's all, that's all it is, guys. There, that is a difference between a guy that knows every rebuttal in this, in this, in this industry, as opposed to someone who doesn't, it's just, you, you, there's a day and night difference for money wise, right? I, it doesn't matter which rebuttal you give me. I know I've, we've done this so many times, right? That it comes out automatic. And if you can memorize the, these handful, there's only a handful of rebuttals guys, right? And you get, and you get good at your craft, everything else becomes easy right? Getting clients is no longer an issue. It's getting and, and again, guys, yeah, I, so, I think uh, it's good that we kind of give that information out to you guys to understand that we're not, oh shit, I got to get on the phone. I got to call the pond. No, no, this is, this is the secret. This is it guys. This is, this is how you set appointments. If you set appointments then you get the opportunity to sell a house, you don't set an appointment. You're not selling a house. You're not selling a mortgage. Go kicks. Yeah. What's up? It's important though, to, to learn, what the rebuttals mean, right? Like, I think that's another, another key thing is what someone says and what they mean is two, is two different things, right? And that's why, that's why I'm going deep with like, what do I really mean when I say the prices are high? So a good exercise for you guys to do right now, if you have a pen and paper, is to write the rebuttal and then write an equal sign and then write what I really mean or what my concern is. Prices are too high equals, don't have enough information on my finances i need probably need to meet with the loan officer and evaluate my finances right i'm working with an agent already that equals i'm not sure if i want to make a commitment to another agent or things are going good or i don't know enough about you to see if i'd want to switch to another agent right interest rates are uh, too high stuff like that right interest rates are interest too, rate high too high equals what, equals what what is interest rate when i say interest rates are too high what am i really saying my payment might be too high my payment might be too high i don't know if i can afford it i need more information on on the finance side of it right you know um i don't know if i want to sell my home right i'm thinking about selling but i'm not sure if it's a good time to sell that might mean well, I don't really know what the next step is. I don't know what, where I'm going to go. I don't know what my next plan is, or I haven't fully worked out the plan. All right. So when you know, like when someone says this, but you know, this is really the root of it, then you're able to attack this more and you're able to ask more questions and like peel the onion back. All right. Don't just go straight for the appointment, right? Like sometimes we're trying to like hurry up and book the appointment and get off the phone. If someone's talking to you and they're opening up, like ask more questions, like go three layers deep. The prices are too high. Hey, I totally understand. Like, you know, have you had a chance to look at your finances, right? What sort of payment would you be comfortable with, right? Um, do you have a down payment or something you want to work with to put towards this house? Like now I'm asking three questions to follow up with this one to start peeling the onion back, all right? So the better you can do, you can get at peeling the onion back and asking more follow-up questions the client is going to reveal what they need. And when they reveal what they need, then you could say, okay, great. This is why we need to meet. So we can go over a, B and C, or we can address those three things you just said, or I can point you in this direction, or I can make this recommendation. But if you don't go deep and you don't peel the onion back and you don't ask more questions and you don't really try to get to the root of the problem, then you can't just prescribe an appointment and expect them to want to meet with you.
Does that make sense, guys? You got to go deep. You got to ask questions. You got to figure out the why, right? Why? Why am I concerned? What do they really mean? What's behind that? Then you can make a recommendation to them. Now, the reason I'm saying this, guys, is because when you understand this, then it doesn't matter what objection they throw at you. When you understand like the key fundamentals of like psychology and communication and the script, the patterns that you got to follow, then I can throw any objection at you. And then you can ask questions to follow up and really figure out what I'm trying to say. So Jomo, Jomo, unmute yourself. You hearing me? Jomo. Yeah. Yeah. Jomo, the, the prices are, you know, the prices seem like they're too high. I just don't know if it's a good time to buy. Okay. Got it. So affordability is your main concern, right? Yeah. Right it's, now, yeah. Def on... Definitely. It definitely is a concern. All right. So um, have you gotten a chance to sit and go through your finances um, at any point? Um, Not really. I just kind of and use one of those online calculators and kind of punch some numbers in. All righty, and that's exactly why I would suggest you, I'm um, speaking with one of my lenders. So pretty much you'd get a broader scope of what you qualify for or what your monthly payments would be. And then, then you would decide to say, hey, maybe I should give it up three months or so, or I should jump onto something right now. Um, so it would have been a perfect opportunity, no obligations or anything. Um, would this actually work for you? Yeah, that works. Okay, stop right there. So Jomo, do you see how now you're able to peel the onion back and you ask follow up yeah. questions and then you're mm -hmm. able to say with confident, well, that's exactly why I think you should meet with one of our lenders. Yeah. Because now you understand what I mean by saying the prices are too high. Because yeah, when, yeah, yeah. when I say the prices are too high and I'm concerned about finances, I don't care what opportunities are in the market. I don't care if it's a good if there's, if it's better for buyers or not, the only thing I'm tripping off of is like, I don't know if I can afford the payments. I don't know if I have enough money saved. So earlier, when we first tried this, you were telling me, well, it's still a good time to buy. There's a lot of people who are buying. You were trying to persuade yeah, yeah, yeah. me something without, without knowing enough about why I was concerned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you guys all recognize that? Like in the beginning, yeah, yeah. like he was just trying to hurry up and go for the appointment and he wasn't asking me enough to figure out why, like I was worried about the payments. And then Enrique, and, it, it, it gives well, you as a, yeah. it gives you as a client to realize that all you did was pull up a calculator. It, you didn't go through step by step as to where you are. So it's pretty much letting me know that, hey, I really didn't put enough research in it to decide whether it's the right time or not. Yep. And then at the end, which was, which was great is you use the technique of once we meet, we'll figure all this out. And then you can see if it makes sense for you to buy in three months right now, you'll see when's the best time, but at least let's get you the information you need. Uh, that was, uh, that's night and day from the initial phone uh, role play we did earlier in this call to right now. And, and um, you, you know what? Yo, I was about to say last week's um, session, I tried, I've been trying to repeat and approve and that literally got me an appointment like the Thursday, me just repeating and approving because he was like, oh, a lot of persons have been calling me, but they didn't actually been hearing what I'm saying. And I've been practicing that with just talking to my mom and my, my, my friends and so on. And it actually works. Um, as Jason said, it's a Jedi mind trick. <laughs> somebody yeah. asked me a question last week and I didn't answer them, but they didn't notice. <laughs> no, it, it worked, Jomo. The only thing that I would probably change on the repeat and refer is always add the first name, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, because that even goes further. So if you say, hey, Enrique, I totally get it. I understand where you're coming from, right? right. Throw the first name first, right? And then follow up with that. That's adding to the repeat. So what you did was you repeated, right? But now what you want to do is you want to acknowledge him directly as like a human and say, yeah. hey, Enrique, I get it. I understand that you're looking for affordability. I understand that prices right. are heavy. Let me ask you this, right? That's your transition phase, right? Right, right. So add the name, acknowledge, and then transition. People, people always like hearing their name for some reason, right? Yeah, it's personalization, basically. Yeah. 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 
PK, I know you're going to wrap up. Before you wrap up, guys, um, I just th – this is the thing, guys. We, we can do this Wednesday one, one time and do this, this role play or this, this training. But in order for you guys to be good at this, you guys have to have to role play this on your own. You have to take people within this circle, within the office, and sit there and role play. Because if you just do it just Wednesday, you're not going to build the skill, guys. You're not going to build that muscle. You're not, it's not going to become natural. You're not going to say it with confidence. So please, 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 at least practice this 10 times a day until next week. Because next Wednesday, I want to go fast through this, and you guys are all going to be – I'm taking a snapshot of this. I'm holding you guys accountable to next Wednesday. We are going to be able to do this like this, right? Because Enrique spent a lot of time structuring this. Now it's your guys' time to actually practice this at least 10 times until next time and until next week. Right, Enrique? You good with that? Yeah. Practice it. Write it down. Like for every – for each person is going to be different, right? Some of you – you guys are maybe you're doing these two steps but you're forgetting that first repeat and approve so like if you're forgetting repeat and approve get a post-it note somewhere and write repeat and approve and put it right there in front of you when you're making your calls right so that you can now like remember repeat and approve repeat and approve or you remember like peel the onion back ask three follow-up questions peel the onion back like make yourself a note put it somewhere where you're going to constantly remind yourself and then start deploying it and start putting that into action so, guys, um, this is it. Uh, thanks for showing up to today's session. Hopefully, you guys got some value today. We'll see you again next week for some more uh, scripting and role playing. Have a good day, guys. Is he paying? Bye. Me?